Hello everyone, this is Devon Loha from the XDC Core Team. I'm really excited to show you guys how to install and run a, a node on the Swarm network. Now, if you're not familiar with the Swarm network, uh, just today on June 29th, um, they, re they released their alpha version. So if you wanna, so they had an amazing event, super informal and super inspiring. Um, and I will provide links to all the information that's in this video in the description. But I definitely encourage you to check out the uh, Swarm Alpha launch event. They have an, a YouTube video that's nearly three and a half hours long that really covers the philosophical and technical value propositions of the Swarm, the Swarm network. Now, uh, I guess I could give a little summary. So Swarm is basically a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized uh, storage network that's optimized for interoperability with EVM-based uh, networks. So that means that Swarm is going to provide a scalable storage layer for Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, RSK, and um, you know, because if you think about if you've ever used um, like Ethereum or Ethereum Classic, it's really transactions and smart contracts, which are technically like, I guess you say, chain code and that's pretty much what you're storing on the chain. And, um, but you're not really st storing like user data or images or uh, Word documents. But, uh, so, but Swarm allows those capabilities and it allows, the, it allows applications and users from other EVM-based networks to interact with the Swarm protocol, which is very awesome. Now there's some alternatives such as I guess, I guess alternative peer-to-peer -peer networks such as IPFS or BitTorrent, but Swarm really differentiates from those because, um, you know, Swarm is um, optimized for interoperability with uh, EVM-based networks, and it's also going to have its own incentive mechanism to ensure, like, economic uh, feasibility and encourage people to join, and I'm pretty excited about that because, you know, it really brings like this internet of value and um, just value-driven data share, value-driven contributions and the whole, this whole internet of value. But, um, but anyways, I encourage you to watch this Swarm Alpha uh, release event. And uh, I'm just gonna get to showing you how to install and run a, a node on Swarm. Now, in order to do that, um, I'll have links to this documentation, of course, and you're welcome to dive deep in th into this documentation. But to, to run a node on Swarm, you have to use uh, B, and B as in like buzzing bees. So B is the protocol providing client node software for Swarm. And if you install and run that, then you can run your own node on Swarm. So there's a few ways to do that. You can install via the binary or you can install from source. And we'll just do it from the bi binary because that's like wicked simple. So if I go to the releases, I'm gonna scroll down and grab one for my system. And they have Windows, a bunch of Linux, even ARM. So uh, I'm guessing we're gonna have to follow up with this video with a Raspberry Pi tutorial. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Anyways, um, I'm using a Ubuntu 64-bit 64, 64 VM, so I'm just gonna grab blinux64. I'm just gonna copy the link to that. I'm gonna do wget uh, flag C. I'm gonna paste that. And then what you wanna really wanna do is you wanna do this flag um, capital O. You wanna rename the file to B when you when you pull it down, whether you're using wget or whatever else, uh, however else you're downloading it because something I noticed is when you just pull down B Linux AMD 64, you're gonna have to run the binary command as in like B Linux AMD 64. And you don't wanna do that, you just wanna run B. So that's why I'm putting this uh, re B here. So I'm gonna pull that down and you're gonna see that the binary is gonna be named B, the list items. You see B here. Now this is a binary, but it's not an executable uh, file, let's say. So what I'm gonna have to do is chmod to change, change some ex, uh, 
some permissions. I'm going to do plus uh, executable commands to B. And that should allow it to be an executable file. Now, uh, and before putting this in my bin directory, I'm going to just test this uh, executable out. Um, cool. And you see it says Ethereum Swarm, Usage, Available Commands, Flags. So that's pretty awesome. It looks like this executable is working. So I'm going to move this to my bin directory. And I'm on a, I'm basically using Ubuntu LTS, so I'm just gonna move B to the bin directory. Oh, permission denied, so I guess I gotta use sudo. There we go. All right, so that should be my bin directory. So if I run B version, I get a version. If I run B help. There we go. I get that returned. So the client software, the B client software to run a swarm node is installed. So let's uh, run a B node. So if I go to B help, okay, available commands to start a node, do B start. All right, and then ask you to add a password and uh, and there the node goes. So you can see here I have, uh, I entered my password and it says new swarm network I just created, which is right there. So then the node is starting. So there you go. That's how you, that's how you install and run a swarm node. Now there are, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop this node. I'm just gonna show you guys something really quick. Um, now, when you think about decentralized storage and contributing to a decentralized uh, storage network, of course, you're going to think about, OK, so obviously, we're storing like all kinds of different types of data. So you're going to be contributing like you know your hard drive space or whatever storage volume um, you have. So I definitely encourage you to go to the Swarm documentation. And uh, in the starting your own uh, starting your node, um, there are some additional information and some configurations that, might, configurations that might be desirable. Something I really, really like is this uh, configuration file. So all you could do is uh, create a YAML file and um, simply pass your, pass your YAML file um, with, with whatever configurations you'd like to make. And one of the really important configurations to make is this data directory one. So let's say you have an external volume or a mounted volume, and you're probably definitely going to utilize this uh, data directory um, data directory uh, configuration in your in your custom custom YAML, uh, YAML config file. And um, you can see like this example is showing like okay maybe you can put it in B directory. So and you can see the default like if you don't config uh, if you just do like B start actually going to go in your home directory user and B. So if I list items, actually don't see anything, but if I list all items, including hidden files, I can see the uh, B directory, and that's where all the uh, data is being stored. So I can actually see everything in there, in my keys and all that stuff. Cool. So I think in future videos, we'll dive deeper more into that. Otherwise, um, I hope this uh, got you started. And um, definitely check out the Swarm Alpha launch event. It's super, super informal from a philosophical and technical perspective. And um, I'm really excited about this project. I hope you are too. And I hope you all have a great day.